So before we get started on today's video, I just wanted to announce quickly that I launched a Patreon page. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking me how you can help out financially outside of buying my additioned prints. Well, now here's a fun, cool way to do that. Um, I set up a bunch of um, rewards to give back to you guys for being so awesome to want to support the channel and my artistic journey financially. So there's a bunch of cool stuff, um, longer cut videos, darkroom live streams, you have access to the Facebook group, and you can win cool stuff like um, work prints and contact sheets. You can help me make selections on what to make prints of, all kinds of really cool stuff. So check out the link in the description, and thank you so much for your willingness to help support this channel. In this video, I wanna go through the top 10 things that I've learned in the darkroom in the past few months. Um, not all of it has been awesome. Uh, although I've had a lot of fun printing lately, um, I've run into some problems that have caused me uh, days in the darkroom, in the dark. <laughs> and um, coming up with solutions to those problems or finding the problems themselves um, has helped me get to the point I am now in which I'm able to create most of the time I'm able to create fairly consistent and um, good looking prints. So without further ado, here is the top 10. Item number one, fresh chemicals. I was using um, the brown chem bottles filled with chemicals. Um, the developer I would make fresh every time but stop bath and fixer I was reusing until I saw some signs of exhaustion. I don't do that anymore. Mostly because I was getting problems with the development. Where it really became apparent was in the fixing. I wasn't fixing long enough with the fiber-based paper or with fresh enough chemical. So when I went to selenium tone, I stained the print. Um, you could kind of look at selenium toning as a fast and dirty residual silver test. Any silver that's left in the paper that hasn't been fixed is going to stain. Use fresh chemicals. I made myself a little cheat sheet, which I'll put a link in the description if you want to use my cheat sheet or modify it. I have this pinned up on my cork board in the dark room at all times so I know that I use this many milliliters of water and this many milliliters of chemical and I just mix up small batches of fresh chemical directly in the tray. So I've got great fresh chemicals every time. Number two, don't rush slow down the clock can seem to drag forever especially after you've exposed a piece of paper and it takes me three minutes to develop in the tray it takes me 30 seconds to a minute in the stop and then i usually will do a full fix now of five minutes so taking all of that time it can seem like forever and you want to click the light on and you're getting antsy but just try to relax and enjoy the process get into a rhythm. I've been listening to audiobooks, um, less music now, just because I feel like it's getting a little bit repetitive. So I've been putting on books now. Um, I stole that idea from Michael Kenna, and that's been really cool. Currently, I've been listening to Treasure Island, which is a lot of fun, so don't rush. Enjoy yourself. Number three, paper handling. Paper handling, handle your paper properly. There's a lot of pee pops in there. Um, tongs, there's little grippy grid pattern on the inside. I popped these off and I flipped them. And that makes it sort of the smooth side is inside. I've also learned that if you, if you choke up on the tongs, it doesn't take as much pressure to hold the paper. Make sure you're holding the print straight down, that way there's no um, bend. You can, you can crease the paper. So. Handle your paper properly, my good friends. Number four, safe lights. Oh my God, this was killing me. Okay, I was getting these stupid line on the right side of my print that was slightly lighter. I could tell that it was a part of the print. It was the negative, but it was lighter than everything else. Couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. Turns out that that um, ghosting was because of my safe lights. So I had too many safe lights on one side of the dark room, which was casting a shadow from the easel on the border of the easel 
The shadow that it was casting was the lighter part. Everything else was getting fogged by the safe lights. So I was, was not able to achieve pure white. Everything was this dingy, washed out gray. And I only finally decided to do a safe light test after just running my head in the wall. I realigned the enlarger like nine times. I, had to, I figured that there was an issue with the, the enlarger, um, light leaks, the easel. I got magnet tape to put on the bottom of the easel blades to keep them stuck down. Didn't help because it wasn't the problem. If I had only done a simple safe light test, that would have solved all my issues. And to do a safe light test, all I did was I put a piece of paper in the easel and I put a quarter on the piece of paper and then I also covered half of the piece of paper with a um, piece of cardboard and just let it sit there for, I don't know, I think it was a couple of minutes, three minutes maybe. And then I put it in the developer and when I did, a nice gray block emerged with a nice white circle in the middle of it. So your safe lights are too bright, my friend. So I killed all but one in the room and I put it furthest away from the enlarger. So it's a lot harder to see in here now, but I have zero issues with paper fogging um, unless I leave my cell phone face side up and somebody texts me. <laughs> Had that happen before too. Uh, so yeah, check your safe lights. Number five, use test strips. I know this seems like a simple, easy, and obvious one, but when you run out of test strips and you're printing, it's a pain in the butt to go and cut more, but do it. It saves you so much paper. I usually can get 10 test strips out of a sheet of eight by 10, which is great because I can kind of selectively put the test strip where I'm gonna be working, whether I'm dodging, burning, or working with um, my high or low contrast filters. I can kind of selectively place the test strip where I know that I'm gonna be um, focusing on. So it saves a lot of paper, it saves a lot of time because you can get things dialed in very quickly. And um, yeah, it's just a better way to work. So use test strips, get into that habit now. Why am I still holding these? Number six, clean your trays. So if you've been developing in the darkroom for any number of time, um, your trays will have probably seen some residual chemicals being stuck and adhered to them. Well, if you don't clean those uh, trays properly and in any regularity, some of that residual stuck chemical will become unstuck and restuck to your nice freshly made print which ends up looking like dingy, uh, stainy looking, gross corners and edges. So clean your trays. Seven, get lots of trays. I know it seems obvious that you're gonna need one for developer, stop and fixer, but when you start getting into more processes or getting more done in one session, um, you're going to need a lot more trays. So I've got trays for developer stop and fixing, but I've also got trays for multiple stages of rinsing baths, two fixing baths. I've got a hypo uh, clearing agent for helping get rid of the residual fixer. And then I also have outside, I set up a selenium toning station, which has selenium, a water bath, and a holding tray. So I don't know, that's, what is it, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I've got 13 trays. I do have one or two left over most of the time now, but it's a lot of trays. Luckily for me, I'm working in eight by 10 and I can get uh, Patterson eight by 10 trays for about five bucks. So um, if you're fortunate like me and working in smaller sizes where things are a little cheaper, then that works out. But nevertheless, you should get ample trays. Number eight, dry down compensation. Dry down has been known to make me curse a lot um, because it was something that I was new to. Uh, I hadn't really experienced a lot of dry down with uh, resin coated paper. With fiber based paper there's quite a bit of dry down and that dry down is different depending on the brand of paper, the age of the paper, the batch of the paper, what everything plays into the amount of dry down. I have found that for the paper that I've been using the Ilford warm tone semi-matte paper, um, a dry down compensation of around 10%. And 
is appropriate to yield me the final look that I want. Um, there are all kinds of things on the internet about how to test for dry down compensation. I suggest you look that up. And for my second plug of the Beyond Monochrome book, uh, I did testing based on what I read in that book. So, uh, yeah, so do that. Test for dry down because it will save you time, heartache, and, and probably uh, expletives. Number nine, notes. Notes, notes take lots and lots and lots of notes. You guys have seen me in the field. I have a notebook that I made um, to keep track of all of the negatives that I shoot when I'm using my 4x5. When I'm in the darkroom, it is just the same. I have a print log that I made. Uh, the print log will help me to, to remember all kinds of things from technical data of the enlarger setup all the way to the chemicals, the tones, the times, the dilutions, um, everything, as well as some boxes in which I can fill out to indicate um, my base times and my burns and dodges, and um, those are really helpful. I keep that in a notebook. Every time I print, I pop one out and I just fill it out as I go, or I fill it out at the end while I'm cleaning up. It's very, very important because when I go back and I make addition two, three, four, or five, whatever, I can dial in everything the way that it was and I can review my notes and I know exactly what I need to do. And usually I don't even have to get one out of the way uh, as a test. I can usually nail it on the first go and each one from that um, point on is, is a final print because um, I've done all the work and I've taken all the notes so there's no need to remember. So in the description, if you want to use my print log, or modify it, um, you can do so. Check it out in the link uh, in the description and it's provided there for you. And last but not least, the classic couldn't figure out 10 full things, so here's a good cop out. Have fun, have fun in the dark room. It can be a very hot and very smelly and sweaty place and if you're not enjoying yourself or the process, it's not worth it. You know, it's just so much easier to get awesome, good-looking, consistent results on the computer, you're going to have to work a lot harder in the darkroom to get things looking the way you want. So enjoy yourself. Have fun. Make your prints. Make your mistakes. Solve your mistakes. Make better prints. That's it. That's the top 10 tips, well, the top 9 tips and a cop-out tip that I can offer you in the darkroom. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you guys want to talk about my mustache, I've been watching a lot of Narcos lately, so um, just let me know. And also, don't forget the link in the description if you guys want to help support me in my uh, journey. The link to my store is in the description. Um, I will see you guys around. We've got a lot more videos planned, so thanks so much for your help and watching, and see you around.